Hi, and welcome back to my channel. So today is day 10, and I'm going to be giving you 10 tips to deal with holiday weight gain. So here are 10 tips to deal with your holiday weight gain from getting out of hand over the holidays. So tip number one, make better bad choices. And you might be thinking, what in the world does that mean? <laughs> so if you're going to eat junk, you might as well... See, some people, let me say this. Some people think, if I'm going to eat junk, I might as well just jam it all down my throat as much of it as, as I possibly can, right? Wrong. So instead, try to make better bad choices. Do, do you get what I'm saying? I don't like that. Hi, and welcome back to my channel. So we're on day 10 of our 12 days of Christmas, and today I'm going to be giving you 10 tips to, on how to deal with holiday weight gain because that is a real thing for a lot of people. So number one, make better bad choices. You might be thinking, make better bad choices. What does that even mean? So try to make better bad choices, meaning limit portions. So instead of sitting down eating the whole pound cake or whatever it is you eat for Christmas and New Year's, have just a slice, you know, a nice moderate slice, right? Pick the lower calorie or lower fat slash high carb stuff at the dessert table. People training hard can handle an influx of carbs act, uh, acutely better than fat, so pick that stuff. Maybe a little bit of a little bit of two or three different desserts just to get a taste and move on. So just have small portions, just enough to taste it and move on. But you get the idea of what I'm talking about. You don't have to sit and eat a big old slice of cake. Let me hold it like this. Cut it in half and maybe just have that much. And then that way you can sample everything. Number two, take a lowered fat slash calorie dessert or dish to a party. So you can't help what other people are going to bring to this, this, this get together, but you can help what you bring. You see what I'm saying? So if you're going to overindulge, overindulge on what you brought because you know it's already low in fat and or calories. So whether a work party or holiday dinner, it's not uncommon for people to bring their own thing to add to the food table. So make something that you defatted, if that's such a word, and lower it in calories. There are zillions of recipes out there, and please choose wisely okay yes there are a lot of things out there that are low in calorie uh, low in calories low in fat but choose wisely find a happy medium between the high sugar slash high fat stuff and clean eating most american desserts have about twice the sugar and butter that they usually need and who knows you might even convert someone into realizing that they can eat sweets without having to be a thousand calories per piece Number three, train with a bit higher volume prior to the event. Now, I know I've done this before on Thanksgiving. I've gone to the gym, worked my tail off, burned about seven, eight hundred calories doing cardio because I know I'm going to go and enjoy myself. So one of the best ways to increase the sink for incoming calories is to deplete muscle glycogen. When you do that by using a higher vol volume, which is more sets, higher reps, of training, not only do you increase fat oxidation, you give incoming carbs somewhere to go for storage instead of being stored for energy. You can simply bump up your volume a bit in the days before a specific event where you know there will be junk. Even a heavy training session on the day of the party can be beneficial. Okay, And bonus, if you'll be pumping... If you'll be pumped at the party because you've worked out. Great for pulling that hot co-worker so that you can both be really uncomfortable the next day at the water cooler. <laughs> So, number four, start with lots of lean protein and vegetables before hitting the dessert table. Okay? Now, I've, all, I've heard over the years that some people like to have their dessert first and then have their main course. But this article I found says start with the lean protein and vegetables before you hit the dessert table. So, this one is for the body obsessed and dieters alike. Lean protein has the highest short-term cetacean. I can't say that word to save my life satating power this means it keeps you full basically and the high bulk of vegetables helps to fill your stomach which also sends a fullness signal so limit the high fat dips okay or a plate of cold cuts i know we love those things but kind of limit those load up on that and get some fullness going before you hit the desserts you won't be as hungry and assuming you don't like eating yourself sick this alone will do damage control okay and so I'm sorry, what I, I've left out was eating a vegetable plate. If you do all of that, that's going to make you feel full and you're not tempted to go and grab the stuff you shouldn't be eating. Number five, have a high protein snack with some vegetables or fruit 
about 30 minutes beforehand. If you're in a situation where number four won't work or won't be available, have a small snack before the party or dinner. Some lean protein, veggies, and fruit about 30 minutes will give you a feeling of fullness and help to limit overconsumption or junk at the party. Number six, consider intermittent fasting on the day of the event. Intermittent fasting is a recent dietary approach that involves not eating for 14 to 18 hours per day and then either having an eat period of roughly four to six hours or even a single meal. There's something interesting, there's some interesting, interesting research on it and you can certainly look that up at your leisure. Number seven, consider a short mini diet on the days before the event. Let's say you have an event or two coming up on the weekend and you know that there will be lots of food and you may have control issues consider doing a short, possibly hardcore diet in the days before. Number eight. Uh, number eight, take a to-go box. And I know that's kind of tacky, but if these are close friends and family, they won't mind. So a to-go box or a plastic container. That way you can eat a little bit now and take some home for later. And it just keeps you from wanting to overeat, okay? Now, if these are people that you don't know, I would suggest asking if it's okay to do that because, you know, people will look at you funny and they will talk about you. So be careful of that. But if it's family and friends and they already know you and they know that you're on a healthy regimen right now, they probably won't mind. It's nice to ask anyway, you know, but, but you know, just I'm pretty sure they won't mind. But take your to-go boxes. I keep them. My sister keeps them, my mom keeps them, and your Tupperware dishes, plastic dishes, whatever it is that you want to take some food home with you. That way you're not tempted. And see, this also comes in handy. If you eat something before you go, you're not going to eat a lot. So what you, the other part that you would have eaten, you just take that home and eat it later, if that makes sense, okay? So, number nine, stay off the damn scale. Stay off the scale. No matter what happens, folks often see the scale spike up after a big party. This is exceptionally, especially true after Thanksgiving. The typical carb-depleted trainee is especially prone to this. The high carb intake of your typical holiday event, along with the extra sodium, both can jack up the scale weight just a bit. Not always, not for everybody, but it can just a bit. So what I would suggest is don't go stepping on the scale. And then now you're all depressed and angry with the person that invited you to their event, don't do that. Go have yourself a good time and worry about the scale the following week. Now, I will say this. I will say this. I would, If I did that, I would be one of these people. I'm going to get on the scale. You know why? Because I still want to see, number one, I track my weight. So I want to see where I was before this event and I want to see where I, where I am after. I've actually gone on cruises. I went on one cruise and I gained a little bit of weight. But And I've been on seven cruises now yeah i've been on seven cruises now gain weight on one the other six i didn't lose but i didn't gain i stayed the same so sometimes you may want to get on the scale so let me i, I shouldn't well it can be you know what i'm saying it can be frustrating but it can be a good thing as well because you can see where you are and where you need to get back to number 10 don't be your own worst enemy okay this goes back to what i said in the point number one and a lot of people fall into the death trap the dreaded trap over the holidays, figuring if they've eaten a little bit of junk food, they're just going to go to hell. No, it's not going to send you to hell, sweetie. So stop being your own worst enemy. Okay? So if you if you eat cookies and figure that you've blown your diet and might as well eat the entire bag, clearly you shouldn't do that. I used to be that way. I won't even lie. When I first joined Weight Watchers, if I got off track with my points, I said, and it was Tuesday, I said, the heck with it. I'm eat what I want. I'll get back on track next Monday. But don't let that be you. Stop overthinking it. It's not that deep. It is not that deep. Yes, you have weight loss goals, and I get that, but it's not that deep. You don't have to overthink it to that level. Okay? So, day 10, where I gave you 10 tips on how to deal with holiday weight gain. Number one, make better bad choices. If you're going to eat bad food, make it some better choices. Number two, take a lowered, a lowered fat slash calorie dessert or dish to the party or event. Number three, train with a bit higher volume prior to the event. Number, hold on one second here, you guys. 
Number four, start with lots of lean protein and vegetables before hitting the dessert table. Or better yet, stay away from the dessert table altogether. Number five, high, have a high protein snack with some vegetables or fruit about 30 minutes before you go to your event. That just that keeps you from overeating. Number six, consider intermittent, intermittent fasting on the day of the event. I do not do that, but that is certainly something you can do. Number seven, consider a short mini diet on the days before the event. Number eight, uh, take your, your to-go boxes, your Tupperware, your plastic dishes. And if you do the, the thing I said before about eating before you go, you're not going to be that hungry. So you're only going to eat a little bit. So all you're doing is taking the part, the other part of what you would have eaten. You take it home, have it for another day. But get permission from the host. You do not want to start filling up your dishes and they give you the side eye like, what are you doing? Always ask for permission. Family and close friends, they probably won't mind, but still ask for permission. Number nine, stay off the scale. Stop stressing yourself out by getting on the scale. And number 10, don't be your own worst enemy. And I think a lot of times when it comes to losing weight, we are our own worst enemies. So cut it out. And that's all I have, you guys. Thank you so much for giving me just a little bit of your time. Thank you for my newest subscribers. Thank you for, to those of you that continue to support me in all that I do. If you came to my channel by accident, there are no accidents, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that little bell because I don't want you to miss any. Thing. So until tomorrow when we talk about day 11, take care and we'll talk again soon. <laughs>